Good morning and welcome. My article, uh, written yesterday by the way, was uh, headlined Drones Strike Deep Inside the Kingdom, Saudi Aramco IPO is Dead in the Water. Last week, uh, and please indulge me, last week was the anniversary of 9-11 and it is increasingly apparent that more Americans are questioning the official 9-11 story as new evidence contradicts the official narrative and the latest uh, pretty compelling article was in Mint Press News and uh, I referenced it I think on Thursday. The overwhelming evidence presented now demonstrates beyond any doubt that pre-planted explosives and or incendiaries, not just airplanes and the ensuing fires, caused the destruction of the three World Trade Center buildings, killing the vast majority of the victims who perished that day. The official narrative around the assassination of JFK has been similarly debunked. Two great American writers uh, have touched on this, and uh, both are my favourites. Don DeLillo in his book Libra, which was about the JFK assassination, about Lee Harvey Oswald. There is a world inside the world. There's always more to it. This is what history consists of. It is the sum total of the things they aren't telling us. Thomas Pynchon in Bleeding Edge, which was about 9-11. No matter how the official narrative of this turns out, it seemed to Heidi. These are the places we should be looking, not in newspapers or television, but at the margins, graffiti, uncontrolled utterances, bad dreamers who sleep in public and scream in their sleep. Now, let's turn to events in Saudi Arabia, retaining that in the back of our mind. This weekend have been interpreted every which way and allow me to try and interpret the events outside the echo chamber that is the Saudi paid PR machine and the reflexive Pompeo Iranians under the bed standard response. It has been reported that a swarm of 10 armed and explosive drones struck at the heart of the kingdom's oil industry. The strikes were on Saudi Arabia's 7 million barrel per day Al Qaeda processing complex and its second biggest oil field, Quraysh. Saudi Aramco describes its Abqaiq oil processing facility there as the largest crude oil stabilization plant in the world. Abqaiq is perhaps the world's most important oil installation. According to the EIA Gulf, the plant has a capacity of more than 7 million barrels per day, or about 8% of the world's total oil production. That was confirmed by energy intelligence. Most of the oil produced in the country, Saudi Arabia, is processed at Abqaiq before export or delivery to refineries. Saudi Aramco is assuring the world that it can restore output quickly, but has admitted that the production shutdown amounts to a loss of about 5 million barrels a day. The people said roughly 5% of the world's daily production of crude oil. The kingdom produces 9.8 million barrels a day. I cannot recall an attack of this severity in the kingdom ever. And you will recall Osama bin Laden's very raison d'etre was to attack this installation. The Houthis took responsibility for this attack. UN investigators have previously pronounced that the Houthis' new, new AVX drone likely has a range of up to 1,500 kilometers. Secretary Pompeo immediately dismissed the possibility that these drones originated from Yemen and blamed Iran. 
More worryingly for the kingdom are reports of cooperation by people inside Saudi Arabia. It may well be that the drones were launched from inside Saudi Arabia and that their launch point was far nearer to the targets than publicly assumed. Neither option is a good one. If the Houthis did launch the attack from the Yemen, it speaks to the fact that nowhere in the kingdom is safe and the Houthis have achieved an asymmetric balance which is quite extraordinary. In November 2017, I wrote of how the then 30-year-old Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, MBS, had arrived on the scene and immediately launched an unwinnable war in the Yemen. It will be a cakewalk, MBS said. Over in a week, he said. And they will be throwing rose petals at our feet, he said. Abu Dhabi's MBZ saw the writing on the wall and stop lost his Yemeni adventure. It is clear now that the Yemen war has become Saudi Arabia's Vietnam, or the Soviet Union's Afghanistan, or indeed the US version of Afghanistan, said J. Kemp Energy, and that the kingdom has thrown everything into conflict but failed to achieve a decisive military advantage and favourable political endgame. More worrying for the kingdom is the second scenario where these drones might have been launched within the kingdom, which would be signalling that the Houthis might well have teamed up with the Saudi Shia, who represent up to 25% of the population and have been ground down viciously by the House of Saud, characterised as apostates, and whose leaders have been beheaded and crucified. Zero Hedge is speculating that this is a false flag attack designed to ramp up the price of oil in order to grease the way for the Saudi Aramco IPO. If this is true, and I put the probability at zero, then the Crown Prince is, I am afraid, insane. For who would buy a share of a company when its major installations are not secure, but under severe tax. The Saudi Aramco IPO is now dead in the water. The surge in the oil price, and I wrote this on Sunday, ahead of the movement that we witnessed, so just bear that in mind, which I will get to momentarily, will have zero effect on the IPO, because now the overwhelming geopolitical question is around the longevity of the House of Saud and its Crown Prince, who is of course the proud owner of Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, which means saviour of the world, and according to Robert Bayer, has so many enemies that he sleeps on his $500 million yacht, the Serene, off Jeddah. The much commented on orb is of no help now. If the Houthis have tapped into the Saudi Shia, the House of Saud, in my opinion, is on its last legs. This is a big call and needs to be understood for that. No amount of paid PR or kind words from Trump can finesse this. Over the weekend, so many of the oil watchers I follow were saying, we must wait for the official Saudi comment. Let me tell you this for free. The Saudi comment is worthless, irrelevant, and paid for. The oil markets open on Sunday evening, which they, which they did. On June 17th this year, I wrote quite presently, I must admit, all global markets have become liquidity traps. The oil markets trade 24 hours, but in the earlier hours is when gremlins, wizards, and jinns the Quran say, says that the jinn are made of smokeless and scorching fire. They are usually invisible to humans, but humans do appear clearly to jinn as they can possess them. Jinn have the power to travel large distances at extreme speeds and are thought to live in remote areas, so now you know. Stalk the exchanges, like the FX markets. Therefore, I said, we could very well see a price spike and that one touch is the way to go. 
On Sunday, I predicted we could jump as high as $80, which would have been a 45% leap. We never got anywhere near that because I think a lot of people woke up and it wasn't as liquid as I thought it might be. And its illiquidity would have got us to $80. Um, and I said, then we trade back to plus 10%, uh, which is where we are now, um, as Trump unloads crude from the reserve, which is already announced. So big price spike, then retracement. But then if we get within 10% of Friday's closing price, you need to get long, which is exactly what, where we are now. The production shutdown amounts to loss of about 5 million barrels a day and is a big deal. In May, I wrote about Iran and I quoted Hunter S. Thompson, who described the edge. And I was describing Iran as being at the edge. There is no honest way to explain it because the only people who really know it um, are the ones who have gone over. My mistake was to think Iran was at the Thompsonian edge, whereas it is clear now that it is the kingdom. In, in the annex of, um, of uh, uh, um, my podcast, you will find Margin Call, the movie trailer from 2011, a fantastic film. You'll find a tweet from Zero Hedge, oil enters the infamous Algo ping pong formation. Uh, another tweet from T Commodity, WTI might fill the gap, hitting $58.78. I think he's going to be spot on before resuming the move towards 66. I agree with that outlook. Um, estimated 5.7 million barrels a day of lost Saudi production is the second single biggest sudden destruction on record. Brent futures, a chart there, that's from Bloomberg, soared as much as $11.73 a barrel, biggest rise since the contract was launched in 1988, why I was talking about the one touch. Um, uh, based on the attack on Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Trump's tweet, I've authorized the release of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, if needed, in a to-be-determined amount, sufficient to keep the markets well supplied. I've also informed all appropriate agencies to expedite approvals of the oil pipelines currently in the permitting process in Texas and various other states. This I found very strange. Saudi, this tweet from Trump, Saudi Arabia oil supply was attacked. There is reason to believe that we know the culprit, are locked and loaded, depending on verification, but we are waiting to hear from the kingdom. If they know who it was and they are locked and loaded, why do they need to hear from the kingdom? Which is ultimately a non secretaire. Saudi Arabia's oil production was cut by half. Um, and there's also a link to a video of the multiple explosions that hit the Saudi Aramco oil processing facility. Link to that article where Zero Hedge was speculating that this might be a false flag. Uh, Abcake is perhaps the world's most important oil installation. Uh, my link to the article from November 2017 when I said he, MBS had launched an unwinnable war in the Yemen. Um, and uh, in that same article, I call this an unprecedented moment in the history of the kingdom and the most perilous moment for the House of Saud that I can recall. And I think that's clearly the case um, here. Uh, and also, I relied on some comments by E.J. Malrai, um, uh, who um, is a commentator and not paid for by the Saudis and therefore extremely reliable, I found. Massive uh, smoke plume visible from NASA Earth, that link via Juanes, and then a link to the article where I was quoting Hunter S. Thompson um, and uh, the pressure, the level of financial and coercive sanction warfare that was being placed on Iran. And finally, this comment, at cake is the single most valuable piece of real estate on planet Earth. Thank you for listening.